it is time for yet another exciting episode of How's the Market? Where I'll get you up to date with what's happening in our housing market here in Brevard County and the Cocoa Beach area. Judging by the Google searches that are happening every month, over 165,000 people are searching for housing market crash. Other variations of that search term are up 150, 200% per month. People are definitely looking for a housing market crash, but are we going to see one in 2023? Let's break down the July numbers and find out. If this is your first time here. My name is Eric Larkin, and I'm a real estate agent here on the Space Coast. When I go over what's happening in our market update, I like to focus on trends for all of Brevard County, and then I'll also break down the Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral areas to look at the condos and single family market sales. I think tracking the active inventory for an area along with the sales are good indicators of what's happening in the marketplace. Right now, our active inventory for all of Brevard County has been rather stable. There's been no big swings up or down, and we've been maintaining about 2,500 properties at any given time here in 2023. In fact, we ended the month of July with just over 2,500 properties on the market, and I would say our active inventory has definitely stabilized. Property selling in Brevard County, that's a little bit of a wild card. Our sales, I think, are trending more down than up. Our sales for all of 2023 are behind the last couple of years, and even going back, look, comparing July 2023 to June 2023, there's also a decline in the sales that are happening. In fact, this past July was one of the slowest July months we've ever seen. The slowdown for July and really for the last 12 months, I think, are tied to where our interest rates have been and also what's happening with the homeowner's insurance market. The near 7% interest rates are causing buyers to rethink their strategy. They're either going to have to pay more per month if they want to stay in a particular neighborhood or price point, or they're going to have to adjust where they're looking to move to in order to stay within a particular budget. Will our interest rates continue to rise? Will our interest rate possibly drop? Really, there's no way of predicting what's going to be happening with the interest rates. What I do know is if our rates ever do drop to the low sixes or even the high five percents, we're going to see a surge of buyers returning back to our marketplace. The insurance dilemma that I mentioned, we have seen in July another homeowner's insurance company stop writing for the state of Florida. This is making it more challenging to find any type of insurance company for a property, especially older homes. Most of the homes sold here in Brevard County were built in 1992 or earlier. And with everything happening with the insurance companies, it's getting harder and harder to find a decent rate or even coverage for a property here in Florida. You would think with the number of closings the sales being down for the year that the prices would also start dropping, but that just hasn't been the case here in Brevard County. Our average and median prices continue to be up over last year. July's average price is up over 2% over 2022 and 14% over 2021. The median sales price is also up over last year by 1.5% from 2022 and 16% over 2021. But looking at the median prices, they do seem to be stabilizing. Looking at the total sales for the year, we see that those numbers are down. You would think that it only makes sense that our active inventory would start rising. That just hasn't been the case. We actually haven't had enough sellers wanting to get into the market of putting their home for sale really for the last three years. Sellers were hesitant to list their house between 2020 and 2022, not because they were afraid of their home selling. It's because they weren't certain what their replacement property was going to be. It's tough when you're competing with 15 other offers when trying to purchase just one property. And today, sellers are reluctant to sell because of interest rates. They are locked into an under 4% rate. And if they were to sell their home to buy another property, they're looking at high sixes, maybe 7% interest. Sure, they're going to be able to get a good price and net a good amount of money from the sale of their current home, but the numbers just don't make sense with the next property that they're buying because of where interest rates are at. The Fed strategy of raising the interest rates to slow down and stabilize the market and eventually lowering the prices, it just didn't work. Homes on the market, they are taking a little bit longer to sell. Average days on market for July were 34 days. We still had over a third of our closings happen in seven days or less. We had 39 properties that sold for over a million bucks. And the number of single family homes closing under $200,000 is down to just 22. That was your macro overview of the sales in all of Brevard County. Let's take a micro view of what's happening in Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral, starting with the single family home sales. Active inventory for single family homes actually are rising. We had 37 active homes on the market right now, but the sales also spiked up for the month of July where we had 14 closings. This was the first time since the summer 2022 that we had 
back-to-back -back months with double-digit sales in Cocoa Beach. Trying to find trends of what's happening in the average and median prices in Cocoa Beach are kind of tough to do when we're only looking at average of nine homes closing per month for the year. If we have a couple more homes sell this month versus last month that were over a million dollars, this is definitely going to skew the numbers of what's happening with the average and the median prices. I do know we're having very few homes sell under $500,000. Talk about the condo market in Cocoa Beach area. It's definitely slower as a whole compared to what's happening for all of Brevard County. Our active inventory for condominiums are certainly on the rise. We have 163 active condos, and this is the highest inventory level I've seen since June of 2020. The sales this summer have also been slow for condominiums. We only had 30 closings for July, and this is one of the slowest months I've seen for condo sales in Cocoa Beach. We're only averaging 46 closings per month here in 2023. It's no surprise really that the, it's taken longer for a condo to sell. We average 52 days on market for July and our month's supply of inventory is up to over five months here for condos beachside. In spite of the lower sales and it taken a little bit longer for the condominiums to sell. Our average and median prices are just above what we had seen month over month and last year. But with the sales being as slow as they are for the condos in the Cocoa Beach area and the average and median prices kind of being all over the place, there's certainly something happening with our condominium market that I'll be looking in a little closer on a future video. Really as a whole with our housing market here in Brevard County, except for the Cocoa Beach condominium markets, our housing market is kind of stable. If the home is in decent shape and priced accordingly, it will sell quickly. We are still occasionally seeing multiple offers, but not to the crazy extent we saw in 2020 and 2021. And if you have any questions about what's happening in our housing market or an upcoming move, remember I am here to help. You can call me, you can text me, you can comment below. If you're on any of these social media platforms, you can find me there and send a direct message. However you like to communicate, I am great with. My name is Eric Larkin with Real Brokers. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you on the next show.